Greetings, trombonists at large. I am the Vagrant Trombone, and as you can see, it's I'm still on vacation, and it's raining, so I'm not getting much fishing in, so I thought I'd make a short video about trombone water keys. <laughs> uh, there are a number of different kinds of water keys. You can get a model water keys, Saturn water keys. They have a ring with a bead and uh, ball bearing in the middle that lets the water out. And the uh, other kind with a little doohickey on the end where it's spring and the water comes out. But um, those are topics for another day. I'm here in my little cabin in the woods and I thought that I would just talk about our standard water key. Now, one of the things you never want to do with a water key is you don't want to snap it closed or push on it. It can dent or cause a ring to form that's too deep in the pad and moisture can get around it and eventually it'll start to leak and if you don't want to be spraying your spit or as we more genteely call it our, our water uh, on your friends in front of you your future girlfriend who may never date you now you want to avoid having a leaky water key now uh, every story that I ever do always comes with some kind of tale about yours truly and uh, this one will also include that uh, one day, I had a bass trombone, and the standard water key spring has a long leg that coils around the spring, uh, coils around a couple of times, and it goes underneath the lever of the water key. Whoops, there's some right there. And then another four coils or so, and then another long leg. Well, those legs were sticking out on, on this bass trombone that I had, and I got it caught on something. I don't remember what, but it snapped it off on one side. And so I only had half of the spring pressure holding my water key shut. And I was worried that this was going to cause a big problem and and uh, my horn would leak. But uh, I blew pressure into it, you know, and, and it seemed to be fine. And so I went to my gig that night and I played a big band gig that night. And while I was playing, I was noticing that there was a little moisture coming out of the horn and, and that it was a little funny to attack on notes one after another. But uh, I just tried to ignore it. And uh, the next day I had a rehearsal in the afternoon for a legit gig. And we're playing these long passages with very breathy long notes. And uh, again, I was getting some weird squirreliness in the pitch. I was having a hard time maintaining the center on the note. And again, attacks were soft. So after the weekend, I went to my local trombone alchemist and uh, he told me some mysterious tale about how my spring was now too weak, even though it would seem to be okay, when you get the pressure in the horn and the notes oscillating with the other notes around you, it can cause hyper points of pressure, which will cause the valve to oscillate open and close. And it sounded like mystic science to me, but um, whatever. So he said, I'll change that spring out. And uh, he changed the spring. And lo and behold, <laughs> the horn played better. Well, a number of years went by, and I never had really had any more trouble with that horn. And uh, I bought a new horn, and I went to him for something else. I had something like the valve wasn't working right or something, the bass trombone. And so I took it to him, and he looked at it and said, Got a new horn, huh? My trombone alchemist was a rather surly fellow. And uh, I said, Yep. And he uh, took a look at my spring, and he said, That spring's too tight. And I said, the last spring was too loose, and this spring's too tight. And I, I said, I feel like Goldilocks here. And he, I said, I think you just want to sell springs. And he said, no, no, this spring is too tight. So I said, okay, go ahead and change it. He said, I'll do it for free. I said, good enough. So he changed the spring, and of course, the horn played better. He was telling me that the spring creates too much pressure on the crook of the horn by having the spring so tight, it's pushing against it and pulling the alignment, and it makes it hard to hit high B flats. And I was a bass trombone player. I don't hit high B flats. But I thought, okay, good enough. And then he looked at it again, and he said, that's a neoprene pad you have on there. And I said, yeah. And he said, the problem with neoprene is it has little air cells in it. But the air cells aren't isolated. They are connected, interconnected, and moisture can get into it and cause the pad to swell and not seal completely 
and you'll get this strange oscillation thing that he talked about, and uh, it'll leak. So he said, I'm going to change it out. I said, okay. So he changed it out, and he put a natural cork on there, and I played the horn, and he was right. It played better. It did, you know, and it's not a lot better. It's just increments, tiny little increments. But when you're playing the trombone, you know, every little bit helps. So uh, I took those lessons, and I'm relating those to you now. But um, the thing to remember is a spring that is damaged or really old can get too weak. And when that happens, it can cause your horn to behave a little funny, like it's leaking, but you can't find anything wrong. And when the spring tension is too tight, you might have a hard time hitting a high B flat. Now, there are other ways to solve that with other water keys, but as I said, a topic for another day. Looks like the rain is stopping, and I may grab my fishing gear and give it one more try. So, until next time, I am the Vagrant Tromboner. Or... I'll see you next time. <laughs>